Don't do this. Don't do this, you. Wait, what? What was that? What was that? What are you? So, we're friends now, mate. Right? All good. Just watch a movie. Which one? What's that? What's that? Buzzfeed. We're gonna watch it. Till you love it. Mate, this is my favorite video. Seriously, my Never favorite fucking video. mind, then. What? 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 We're gonna watch them all. all right. This is the car, this is the track, and this is a couple of monkeys driving a better functioning car than me, getting a four times for contact right there, but actually checking behind them before rejoining. So great rejoin on the monkeys. This was my qualifying session for Snetterton, uh, my first race. As you can tell, I went off the track there, so that is going to kill my uh, qualifying, and I only had time for one lap. I was late to join qualifying, so that would put me with no qualifying all the way down behind Brandon Ruiz. I believe I am in P11 to start this one off, so pretty far towards the back. And um, we have Joey, a couple of cars ahead of us. Look at that beautiful livery. That is the pole sim racing endurance team livery that we will be running for the Misano 12 hour on the 29th. Into the race, this guy is um, trying to look like Owen Isley with a horrendous uh, <laughs> Uh, livery there we actually jumped two people there so or jump one guy and now we're side by side with car number 15 who's gonna stay out wide so we are up the inside already made our way up into p9 we can see joey just a couple of cars ahead of us looks like he's side by side with the red guy who takes a defensive line to uh defend joey through turn two and we are just going to follow behind justin mullins who's ahead of us and try and settle into somewhat of a rhythm Coming around corner three, really interesting corner here. It's wet on the inside, so you can see a couple of people really hugging me inside. I try and cut back for a little bit of a drier line. I see his windshield wipers ahead of me through his window and remember to turn mine on. And it wasn't actually raining during this race, but um, it was wet for those of you who are blind or just really stupid. It is, it, it, it is wet, the track is wet, so. There's gonna be spray being thrown up from basically everybody onto everybody else. Um, so if you, you know, there's nobody in front of you, your windshield really shouldn't be getting wet as it's not raining. And this made for very, very interesting uh, lines because I had I had driven this track when it was like basically downpouring and I actually felt pretty comfortable pace-wise when it was absolutely just like fucking dumping buckets from the sky. But in this scenario, it was kind of half dry. So it made for this really kind of weird lines that you could take you know you had a little bit more grip but it was still very easy to lose the car we have 2.1 seconds to the car behind us Ber burn it burn that not quite sure we also get a really good run going on to the straight able to just about get alongside with justin mullins who is maintaining an inside line as we head towards the chicane and i'm not going to risk it here i settle behind him he has to break a little extra hard there to take that inside line and uh, still get through there with decent speed so we are losing a bit of time to joey not much we're about 1.2 seconds to joey at the moment as we approach the penultimate corner it's quorum corner funnily enough this track has like all of the corners the names of the corners are right next to the corner so that's nice i notice on this occasion that i am much faster than this car number 16 and perhaps not not faster all of the way through not even that much faster on the exit especially on this occasion where i totally put two tires onto that curb on the right side and slide out uh don't want to be doing that the curb holds a lot of moisture but i did note that through kind of the mid section of quorum i felt much much faster so hoping at some point to get alongside and possibly put a move on him into the final corner uh, running onto the straight right here this is lap three williams is the corner that leads onto the straight it's pretty important here that you avoid this curb on the left just about as much as you can and still get a late apex there so we get a decent exit we're 0.2 seconds behind justin perfect gap if i can maintain this gap and really send myself alongside honestly around the outside or the inside whatever is available um through quorum that is my plan at the moment get a decent exit out of the chicane as well and he has a pretty rough one where we kind of looked to do dive on the inside there but ended up backing out right behind him making slight contact but nothing dramatic and as we enter into quorum we are in v prime position he's holding very tight there's a lot of grip on the outside of this corner people don't 
use it and we are going to push our car around dart ahead and really take track position as we enter into the final corner get the car stopped and we do get all over that curb so we don't get a fantastic exit but we have track position he's 0.2 seconds behind us now and uh, i believe he got a better a better exit out of that last corner but he ends up backing out here he doesn't want any of it and thank you for that uh justin i am able to pull away and by the time we come through the first corner the gap is about a second to him the gap to joey up ahead has opened up to about two two seconds so we've lost uh about three tenths of a second to joey through all of that fighting throughout quorum i'm not super worried about it i am beginning to kind of settle into the track conditions and find where you can really take advantage of the fact that it's not raining um but still avoid where the moisture is collecting and by the time laps lap six comes around you can see there's a pretty big gap behind me so uh, I've started to catch up to Joey and this red guy ahead of him, and I'm keeping an eye on my relative as we come through Quorum because that's where I made that last move, and I feel like if I'm going to make another one, this is a place to do it. I noticed that Joey closes up this gap to the red guy massively, so in my head, I'm thinking that that guy in the red car is probably not super confident throughout Quorum and uh, maybe not really confident in where the grip is there as well. It seems like he's being pretty conservative. If that situation arises, we have seven more laps to do it or uh, six more laps to do it. If that situation arises, I want to try and put a similar move onto this guy. A couple of corners later and car number eight kind of begins to fall back. And this is a situation I am always open to once I see, you know, cars ahead of me starting to slow each other down, which should at some point bring them all back to me. And it gives me confidence that even though, you know, I'm in P8, there is a possibility of P5. He's only two seconds up the road and it seems like he is losing time to uh, car the car in P6. And it may not stay like that, but just seeing him fall back like that, you know, it kind of gives you that motivation and you just hope that that trend is going to continue. Going through Williams, the corner that leads onto the straight, cutting very wide and looking for a late apex, trying to take that dry line and avoid this curb as much as I can. I do get a tire up there, but uh, it's nothing major. And Joey politely is going to move to the side here and actually lift off of his throttle. So he's going to let us through and that will send us darting towards the car in the red, Andrew in P6. So we are now up into P7. Andrew opening up that corner on the uh, the second part of the chicane there quite a lot. Perhaps that is something that I should look forward at doing in the future. I'm not super confident through that chicane, but not worried about changing that at the moment. So about a second to Andrew as we enter into Quorum, and this is something I was really, really paying attention to just to kind of gauge the situation for future laps. By the time we get out of that final corner, it's about half of a second. He does get a good exit, so it brings some of that time back, but I'm not really all that worried about that because I can defend that that exit if I get ahead of him in the mid corner and it seems like I am faster through the mid corner so my plan is to take track position there and then defend into corner one of the next lap and this is lap number eight we are approaching Williams which leads onto the straight as we have mentioned taking that wider line and looking for that later apex to uh, build up as much speed as possible onto the straight and we are just about in prime time position here, 0.3 seconds, 0.2 seconds apart from Andrew at the moment, which is a similar gap we had to uh, Justin earlier in the race when we made that move into Corum on him. So I'm hoping that I can repeat something like that, trying to open up the second part of the chicane as much as I can. Do uh, pretty well at it, I'd say. We have him at that same gap still. All we need to do is get a good run through here, and the run in doesn't seem bad, but we get a bit loose there on the exit, slight oversteer, and then we drive over that curb, so I have to modulate my throttle a little bit to avoid spinning. Even still, after dropping about two tenths there, we are almost in the position to make a move into that final corner. Not quite, but uh, we do close that gap back up a little bit through the mid corner, so... I may have messed it up that time. Skipping ahead to the next lap, we're gonna give it another go. Uh, as we come onto the straight, we're actually a bit further back, about half of a second to him. I'm not super worried about that. I just need a good run through the chicane. And more importantly, I need a really good run through the corner right after the chicane that leads into Quorum. I think it's called like Bomb Corner or something crazy like that. Through the chicane, it's looking pretty decent for us. We have slightly closed that gap up onto the curb, but it's nothing major. It's called Bomb Hole. So through Bomb Hole, flying through here we get a fantastic exit the gap is closing rapidly we are about a tenth behind him at this point flying in here he's going to defend the outside so we look to make a move up the inside pushing the car finding the grip and totally end up missing our brake marker here i realize it way too late so flying off the track we go very deep there uh, we just about had that move done i think we definitely could have gotten that move done if it wasn't for my lack of braking um, early enough so joey goes through we gather ourselves back up 
and uh, lose one position there. Lap 12, this is the penultimate lap, and Joey now is hunting down P6 from Andrew, the car in the red, and this is Quorum, so penultimate corner once again of the penultimate lap, about to head on to the final lap, and Joey's going to take this one kind of easy, just staying behind him. I know Joey can go through here faster, and I think he knows that as well, so he's definitely aware that you know, we're entering on to the final lap here. He has to do something soon. Also, car number 10 behind us, he's only 0 0.6, 0 0.7 seconds behind us. So we have slight pressure from behind. At the same time, we're kind of staying connected to this battle between Joey and Andrew. If anything were to open up there, you know, maybe we could pick up a position. I just want to stay close enough so that that opportunity arises. I am able to execute and uh, at the same time, stay away from Mateus behind, possibly looking to go defensive if the gap changes all that much into the chicane at the end of the straight. We've got about a half a second between Joey, half a second between Mateus behind us. So we're kind of chilling here. I'm not feeling like we're under any pressure. I'm really hoping that Joey will absolutely fucking fling it up here and murder this guy and himself which would put me into P6, and I think that's just about the only way I'm getting that high of a position at that point. This is the penultimate corner. Joey is staying behind. It doesn't look like anything too extreme is going to happen here. However, Joey opens up this final corner massively, looks for a really good run, and he actually achieves it, moving on to the side of Andrew, making slight contact and approaching the line. A photo finish. Joey does manage to snag it just barely, claiming P6 on the final lap, final corner. Congratulations, Joey. That was superb to watch. As we come around, this is like the cool down lap. I kind of cut the left side off from car number five and he ends up running into car number eight who's parked on the right side. So unfortunate come together for those guys. And then uh, me and Joey just park it around. I think this is corner three. So taking a look at the results here, TJ and Will Lewis, I'm pretty sure both of these guys are like Williams esports drivers, whatever, they won. Uh, I lost a shit ton of safety rating and I rating there. Joey, he crossed the line 0 0.017 seconds uh, before Andrew. So pretty, pretty close photo finish there for them. And congratulations again to Joey. It was an absolutely fantastic watch. Next uh, lobby, this guy says, my first time ever on this track, first time with this car, which is got to be pretty high on the list of things you don't want to hear when you jump into a race. We are starting on P2, however, so we are nowhere near that guy. Thank God. We have a car number 15 who just about launch, jumps the start there. He like starts to roll and I think he hesitates onto the throttle directly after that. So we fly up into the lead. A very rare sight there that we actually jump somebody on start. I think it's actually happened in both of these races so far. Pretty amazing. Car number four looking for a move up the inside of 15. Not quite going to be able to make it. Space afforded by both of them. And that is some very respectful racing. A few cars behind and car number six, Rexy, sending it up the inside on car number two, which I love to see in my relative and I mean this is unfortunate for two he gets oversteer off into the dirt but uh, fortunate for me as that guy was really the only person who was kind of on my pace during the practice session so I felt like I may have an opportunity here to run away with it taking a little bit too much of the dirt there uh, nothing major but we do lose just a little bit of speed as we head towards Agostini which is this corner right here it's like a hairpin and man you will see in this race how much uh, pain that that hairpin eventually causes me. So towards the end of the first lap and car number 15 still on our tail, he doesn't get the best run through the bomb hole and heading through Corum, I am pretty confident here. This is, you know, this is, we, we talked about Quorum in the last race and I will continue to uh, further that gap slightly as we go through Quorum and out of Quorum, getting a pretty decent exit. 15 struggling on his exit out of the final corner onto the starting straight. And that'll put uh, car number four slightly closer to him as they head around lap number two, turn one. And this guy ahead just drives directly into the dirt. That's going to slow him down majorly. And that allows car number four to jump him, which I am not super concerned about. But I mean, as far as I rating is concerned, that guy behind me now should be faster than the guy behind him. The guy who started on pole is 1.1 K I rating. So I mean, it just goes to show the rain can make tons of crazy shit happen. I am car number one. So I am expected to win this race. And at the moment, it's looking pretty decently. Um, through Agostini, you might have seen a little bit of wiggle I got there. That is kind of like the the uh, the bottom level of problems that I will have there. It it gets a lot worse than that. 
By lap number four, we have opened up the gap pretty significantly to the car behind. However, the car behind him, number eight, take a look at this guy's lines. Through turn one, extremely narrow entry, really staying to all of the, uh, the dry lines. And I mean, if I'm being honest, it doesn't even look that dry. Through Agostini, he is entering damn near on the apex. So I, I wasn't able to see this as I was way, way up ahead, but he catches car number four pretty quickly with these lines. And by the time lap number five comes around, I'm assuming that car number four is feeling the pressure. Eight has caught him up from a few seconds back at this point and heading towards the chicane eight, like he does on every other corner, taking an extremely tight inside line, really slowing the car down. And car number four is gonna kind of back off there. It's uh, it, it gets a little hairy when you go too wide through the exit of that chicane there in the rain. So eight has now jumped him and there is nothing standing between him and myself as I am currently coming around to finish out this lap. He is not all of that far behind me. I think he's probably about two, maybe four sec, 3.8 seconds behind me is the gap. However, his lap time is looking pretty good. He did a 203.4 on his last lap. I did a 205.6 on that current lap. So it's, it's definitely, um, he's looking a lot faster than me. He did do a 205.5 on that last lap, but he also had an overtake. So that probably slowed him down a little bit. I am, I've, I've been watching this guy, my relative. I know that he is quick ish quicker i mean honestly probably quicker than me in this scenario he is so far so i i just need to drive consistently in the rain if you can drive consistently i mean you're pretty much safe as long as i don't botch anything majorly making the turn that is uh basically the run up to agostini we've got four seconds to juan behind us i'm feeling safe but it's about to get a lot less safe as we lock up heading into Augustini, going extremely deep into the dirt, actually. And we managed to get back on track before Juan can catch us, but he definitely closes up that gap pretty substantially as he is just taking his, like, I mean, it's like, I feel like I'm going for some pretty fast lines here, even though I may not be executing them in a fast manner. I am attempting to take fast lines. And I think Juan was just like, fuck it. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna chug along at my own pace. And just the fact that he has closed up the gap now from four seconds to 1.5, it's a pretty pivotal moment for both of us. It says that either I am able to handle this pressure, I'm not feeling the pressure from you, and I'm able to open that gap, which I feel like would not demoralize, but it would demotivate him slightly uh, in the sense of him being able to catch me. But that's not really going to happen. You can see me absolutely struggling through bomb, the bomb hole and into Corum. I am carrying not nearly as much speed as I really should be on entry and that gap I think it was at about 1.4 seconds through the bomb hole and as I exit it's going to be around one second so I think ultimately I, I maybe lost a tenth there honestly maybe less than that it looks like he might not have had the greatest run through there either but the fact that I'm slipping around is kind of getting into my head. I haven't led a race in a minute guys I'm going to be honest I haven't uh, I haven't won a race in the rain ever. So even though I'm like 2000 I rating above this guy, which should say that I should be able to win my mental state, especially for this race was just not in a great place. There was other stuff going on too. I'm gonna just lay out all of the excuses. Okay, I was wearing these Adidas socks and they were like super slippery. I usually wear Nikes. I love Adidas, but like their socks compared to Nikes, I have to say that I, I think that's kind of like a widely known thing that Nike socks are better. Um, my phone was low on storage and it was like making these uh these noises next to me these like notifications that it was low on storage that's something else that i don't know maybe that contributed to it also my hair is like really long and if for anybody who's ever had really long hair it's like sometimes one strand of hair gets caught like on your eyelashes or something and it just like stays there it's like you blow it you try and swipe it aside it just doesn't go away so there was there was there was some drama happening some irl drama at the same time you know we're juggling multiple things here tim miller moving to the side for us he's a lapped car thank you tim miller this is lap number eight and uh, the gap is still at about one second i was actually driving decently consistently at this point but if i had to guess i'd say that one was like fucking on one at this point um he's he's right behind me and the guy behind him is 11.6 seconds so i think he's feeling probably feeling pretty good and being that chasing car sometimes just gives you like superpowers and as you can tell it's raining and what that means is as the race goes on it's going to get wetter and wetter it was 
the track was pretty dry at the beginning, but it's getting wetter and wetter, and I didn't quite account for that. Taking too far of an outside line and not getting on the brakes early enough there, it's gonna send me deep. Um, it actually almost helped me in this instance. I mean, by the time I get back on the power, I, I'm, I'm looking at a super late apex, and I'm actually able to build up the power really nicely. I think we actually gained some time on Juan there as I've kind of said he's taking like these very reserved tight lines which is great for racing um if i think if, if i were able to nail these lines if i were better um i would be not so close to him but i'm not so i'm i'm, I'm just i've just put myself in this kind of shitty situation uh mentally i'm i'm not feeling great lap number 10 we're two seconds ahead of juan at this point car number 13 into augustini goes extremely deep similar to that line we took earlier and as he rejoins the track i take note that he's a student driver there's also blood on his car so two different things to take note of but i feel like they have similar messages and through hamilton corner he's going to stay to the right all over that curb letting us through which is awesome so we now have somebody between Juan and ourselves I was really hoping that he that the um, the student driver would pull some like crazy bullshit that would end up slowing down Juan as they go through Williams the student driver goes pretty wide there that's definitely an off track also it's gonna hurt your run a lot in the in the wet when you get all over the curb like that and even in the dirt so Juan goes through with no problem 1.3 seconds behind us now as he had a uh, significantly better run through Hamilton than us coming through the chicane this is lap number 10 by the way 13 lap race we do manage to stay on the dry line coming out of the chicane get a really good exit absolutely firing out of there probably could have carried more speed through the bomb hole but the exit kind of makes up for it I suppose staying on the dry line through Corum and you can push this guys you can push this for anybody who drives this track in the future just know that through Corum in the wet you can push it like you can push it a lot more than you think and that kind of was our savior that those last couple of corners would continue to help us pull away from Juan just slightly by the time we cross the line there it's a two second gap and by the time lap 12 comes around that gap has remained the same this is the penultimate lap heading into Augustini for the uh, second to last time and I wish I would have seen or just recognized this earlier the signs were in my face all through this race that there was a puddle right where I continued to put my left tire into the braking zone. It bites me in the ass again. I did realize after that, I was like, okay, I saw the puddle this time. I know why that happened. I'll be able to avoid it in the future. However, it is a little too late to save me from maintaining the lead. So Juan goes through. He is now about half a second to three quarters of a second ahead of us. Uh, smoke in the air, like so, like somebody like blew a gasket or something. And that is probably from um, Marion ahead of us. He's the lapped car. He's three seconds up the road. That's the guy who said that he had never driven this car or this track before. And the fact that it is raining, I'm sure, is not helping him. Juan up ahead taking his very strange inside line. At the moment, this is the first time I've kind of seen him take a line. And I was wondering why he was defending that. But watching this back, I realized it's just the way that he was driving. Um, we actually closed the gap up a little bit coming through the second part of that chicane and through bomb hole. Really, really need a good run here. And indeed, we get it. Juan has slight oversteer. We are in that perfect position thinking about looking a move through Corum, but he gets a really good initial push of speed and it kind of dissuades me from looking for any type of move because I, I don't want to make a move late into this corner. We saw what happened in that last race when I did that and missed my braking zone. I think it's just better to not do that. We get a significantly better exit than him through the final corner, heading on to the final lap, and he is guarding the inside with his life, heading into turn one, looking to make a move around the outside. I end up braking slightly early and trying to really hunt for a good exit here. For whatever reason, I'm looking straight through this guy, and I drive literally right into him. So welcome to Porsche Cup, and welcome to Snetterton, I guess around the outside of him eventually that does of course kind of um put us off of juan slightly coming out of corner number two and it's looking like it's going to be about uh probably three tenths of a gap to juan heading into augustini i've taken note of what i did wrong last time and i think i actually kind of keep a similar line here but what i do instead is i just lift when that puddle comes up so i just release my brake pressure slightly as we go over that puddle to avoid locking up my tire there so i won't make that mistake again 0.4 seconds we gain some decent time on juan through there i know that if we can just put together a decent lap we will have a really really good chance into quorum corner and that's where all of my focus is at the moment i want to stay about i want to get to about 0.2 or three tenths behind him 
down the straight, and I think that that will yield us a, uh, a decent chance into Corum. So here we go through Williams, needs to look for a late apex here, really find the power, avoid all of the puddles, stay in the dry, and I am feeling really, really good about that run. We're about three tenths behind Juan at the moment. Um, I can't see shit. I'm in his spray looking to move around the outside just to open up this corner for myself. I, I, I firmly believe that my lines are faster if I were able to really commit to them, but I was being a little bitch. I was really scared to put the throttle down as hard as I probably could have and not using all of the grip available. Through bomb hole, I get a pretty decent exit. He goes a bit wide initially, cutting back. It's gonna kill a little bit of his speed, not much. Looking to open up Corum and find a good exit into the final corner. However, I totally fuck it up, understeer completely to the inside of the track, but I think it scares him just enough so that he breaks slightly too light off the track and around the final corner, he is rejoining the track, slides back into the dirt and we claim P1, probably out of sheer fear that, um, I mean, he probably thought we were just about to absolutely murder him. And uh, to be fair, it was a possibility, but uh, it didn't happen like that. I think there was space if he wanted to take the uh, take the racing line there. However, he didn't. He drove off the track, and I just have to drive over Augustini one more time. Fuck that corner. It almost ruined my race. Um, well, I almost ruined my race, but we didn't. We ended up coming across for a win, baby. Props to Juan. His uh, best lap was actually faster than mine. He drove that race fantastically, almost flawlessly. Gained 37 I rating, lost a little bit of safety rating, not too upset about that, that is just how it goes. And uh, yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, please check out some of my other stuff, check out my channel, and I'm willing to bet there's a lot of stuff there you will enjoy as well.